Hey guys, Metal Viking 82 here, back with another Viking Orations. Got on yet another album review for you today, and this time I'm going to be talking to you about the forthcoming album from the band Scars of the Flesh, entitled In Darkness Alone. Now, if you're not familiar with Scars of the Flesh, they are a progressive death metal band out of San Antonio, Texas. Been around since 2015, featuring Robert O'Brien on the bass, Colin Rios handling drums. You have Derek Russell on rhythm guitar, Brian Eckerman on lead guitar and vocals, and finally, Kobe Lang on lead vocals. This is the band's third full-length album overall. It is nine tracks, just a little over 51 minutes in length, and you get five original songs as well as four cover songs. And uh, honestly, I've been a fan of this band since hearing their 2020 album, Reaching Into the Void. Uh, so when they announced a new album, I couldn't wait to hear it. And honestly, it made it even more awesome to me when the promo landed in my inbox because this is supposed to be put out by the band themselves. And I did not expect to get a promo for it, but I was very excited to give this a listen. And right off the bat, the opening riff on here gives off a serious Inquisition vibe to me before really kicking things into gear. Uh, overall, great tone to the guitars on this album. Um, <clears throat> they hit you with these mid to fast paced riffs along with some tremolos and there's also some uh, chuggier sections uh, that have a nice head bangable gallop to them at times as well along with some really tasty guitar solos on here. I love the solos on this album. Uh, really thick toned bass. It's not too high up in the mix um, yet it's heard more kind of working in tandem with the guitars to kind of build that wall of heaviness but that is not to say that it doesn't come through more at times so you can really get a good sense of the tone that they got uh very powerful drum production on here i love the kick drum sound they got and this has a great snap to the snare nice patterns rolls and fills i love the blast beats and the double bass work on here which actually gets pretty quick at times as well um I also love the uh, utilization of keyboards on here as, uh, you know, they are not overdone, but they're always used at the right time to really create atmosphere or as a needed accompaniment to a particular riff. Um, a good example, track number three in Darkness Alone, the title track. At 35 seconds in, it comes in, or should I say, they come in at a nice slow riff, and then at about 423, um, they come in again under this sustained guitar riff and actually has a bit of a Halloween vibe to it. You know, it sounds like the keys from the Halloween movie, uh, as well as at the end of the song, they appear again to kind of fade out or, you know, company in in the song i should say uh vocally here colby delivers a very intelligible mid-range growl mixed with some really nasty screams and honestly he reminds me of peter tagrin which is honestly not the only hypocrisy aspect on this album but i will get to that later um now, when you get to track number two, the hooded one, he does this spoken word passage at the beginning as well as later on in the song that really brings to mind Danny Filth. Like, as soon as I heard it, I was like, man, that's that reminds me of Danny Filth or maybe even, um, oh, God, I cannot think of the guy, the um, vocalist of Moonspell, whose name is totally escaping me right now. You know, mostly Danny Filth, but it could be, you know, Moonspell as well. Um, some of the other things that I picked out on here, track number four, Memory Unknown. I got serious vibes of the song Death Row, No Regrets, by Hypocrisy, uh, while listening to this song. The, just the, despite having some faster moments in the song, the slow pace to the song, just the way the riffs were sounding to me, just really reminded me of that song. And honestly, that's one of my favorite Hypocrisy songs, so that was really cool. Uh, track number five, Moore's Eterna. This is a really great instrumental song acting as a kind of a relief point, if you will, from the barrage of the other original tracks that you get on here before we get on to the cover songs. I love the slow picked kind of acoustic-y riffing with the uh, keys, and I believe it sounds like violins accompanying them, uh, as well as the twin guitar section that starts at the 228 mark with some really great harmonies that come in there. Uh, yeah, now as I said, there are four cover songs here. You have Chant for Eschaton by Behemoth, Silent Night Fever by Dimension Zero, you have uh, Victorious March by Amon Marth, and finally The God That Failed by Metallica. 
Uh, overall, I think they did a great job on all of those songs. Now, when you get to the Metallica cover, this is actually the only time that Brian actually takes over on lead vocals with Kobe kind of providing backing vocals here and there. And honestly, when you compare the two, Brian has a decidedly more black and tinge to his vocals. And also, when I listen to that song right off the bat, that bass in the intro is just so badass and i love that they actually added some keyboards into this cover song so they gave it kind of a uh, grave wormish feel to it uh overall this is an absolute banger of an album in my opinion it's heavy yet it has melodic and head bangable touches to it and it has an overall hypocrisy vibe to it throughout the whole album which is not a bad thing because i love hypocrisy uh, the songs may be long, but they're so well written that you honestly do not notice, and they never seem to drag at all that I could notice. And I love the fact that they didn't just do these four cover songs note for note like some people might do. They actually made them their own uh, while keeping it original at the same time, if that makes any sense. Uh, definitely an album worth checking out. I would give this a solid 9 out of 10. Go check out Scars of the Flesh. I will be leaving links down below so you can check them out for yourself. Check out the singles. Pick up a copy. I got my bundle already ordered. This comes out November 18th uh, from the band themselves. So if you like what you hear from the singles, pick up a copy. That is going to do it. 9 out of 10 for me. Go check out Scars of the Flesh. And yeah, until next time. Stay brutal.